Let's think now about how air is getting in and out of the lungs. And this is vital for us to understand so we can rectify it when it goes wrong because A and B, airway and breathing, of course, are our clinical priorities. So if you put your hands on your chest for me like that, take a breath in. I think you can see that your hands move up and out when you breathe in. If you put your hand on your tummy and take a deep breath in, I think you can see that your hand moves out. So to facilitate inspiration, breathing in, the chest wall moves up and out and the diaphragm moves down. And I just want to show you a little more anatomy on this model here. Here we see the, the rib cage. We count the ribs from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, going down. The sternum at the front. Now what actually happens for the ribs to go up and out is the external intercostal muscles contract and that pulls the ribs up and out. And the reason that your tummy goes out the way is because the diaphragm goes down the way pressing on the abdominal contents. So inspiration is ribs up and out, diaphragm down. As the diaphragm goes down, that moves the tummy up the way. So if we go back to our diagram that we looked at on the previous video, we notice that we have two sets of intercostal muscles. The external intercostal muscles on the outside and the internal intercostal muscles on the inside. Now to breathe in, the external intercostal muscles contract and that brings the ribs up and out. It's an active muscular contraction. And to breathe in, the muscle of the diaphragm also contracts. And when the muscle of the diaphragm contracts, what the diaphragm does is it flattens, it moves down the way and flattens. So when the diaphragm is domed up the way, it's relaxed. When it contracts to facilitate inspiration, it moves down and flattens. And as the diaphragm moves down, if you imagine my fist there is something in my abdomen, when the diaphragm moves down, you can see it's pressing on the abdominal contents. And 75% of respiratory effort is facilitated by the diaphragm. That's why if people have someone sitting on their tummy, or there's some rubble, for example, on their tummy, or after a road traffic accident, and they can't move the abdominal wall out the way, that stops the movement of the diaphragm down the way, and that can actually be a cause of asphyxiation. To be able to breathe freely, you have to be able to move your chest and your abdominal wall. You need both. So external, intermuscle, ex external intercostal muscles are contracting, bringing the ribs up and out, diaphragm going down. So to breathe in, to breathe in, it's ribs up and out. Diaphragm down. So ribs up and out, diaphragm down. Now both of these will increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. So if we think about me, if the ribs move up and out, so instead of being there, they're now out there, and the diaphragm instead of being domed up when I breathe in, is now flattened. So on this diagram, what we have now is the chest wall is further out, perhaps in this position here. The chest wall is further out now. And the diaphragm is now flattened. Can you see that both of these effects are going to increase the volume of the chest? So ribs up and out, diaphragm down, therefore the volume has increased. And when you increase the volume, 
if you have the same number of air molecules in the lungs, if you increase the volume, the air molecules have now got more space to move around. Therefore, when you increase the volume, you decrease the pressure. So the increase in volume of the thoracic cavity is going to decrease the intrapulmonary pressure, the pressure inside the lungs. Now, in quiet breathing, as you're breathing, watching this video at the moment, the pressure difference is probably only two millimeters of mercury. So in the normal atmospheric pressure outside, there's going to be, say, 760 millimetres of mercury. as normal atmospheric pressure. When the ribs move up and out, the diaphragm moves down. That increases the volume of the thoracic cavity. Therefore, it decreases the pressure, but probably only by a couple of millimetres of mercury. A couple of millimetres of mercury. Something in that order. But the point is that the pressure now inside the lungs is less than the pressure in the external air. We now have a pressure gradient. And as a result of that, air will come into the airway, down the airways into the lungs to equalize the pressure. So the movements of the thoracic wall and diaphragm are going to increase the volume, therefore decrease the pressure. Air will move down the pressure gradient to equalize that pressure, resulting in air coming into the lungs to equalize the pressure. So we can see that air is sucked into the lungs by generating negative intrapulmonary pressures. Rel relatively negative pressures are going to be generated. So we are negative pressure ventilators. Air is sucked into the lungs. Now, if you want to go out for a jog and you're breathing more heavily and the diaphragm is moving down further, then the negative pressures generated can be significantly greater. If the negative pressures generated are greater, then the air will come in, in and out or come into the lungs much more quickly allowing us to breathe more quickly during periods of exercise. So we've breathed in, we've taken a deep breath in, the next thing is to breathe out. Now in you at the moment when you're relatively relaxed and not exercising, expiration is just a passive recoil process. So the external intercostal muscles will relax and that allows the chest wall to fall down and in. And when the diaphragm relaxes, the diaphragm goes up when it relaxes. So the diaphragm is contracted, is down when it's contracted, but up when it's relaxed. So we see the situation is to expire, to breathe out, chest wall down and in, diaphragm up. So to breathe out, ribs go down and in, diaphragm goes up into the domed position, because in the domed upward position, the diaphragm is relaxed. And both of these effects the downward movement of the chest wall, the upward movement of the diaphragm, I think you can see that is going to reduce the volume in the thoracic cavity. The volume will now be reduced. If the number of air molecules in here is the same and we have a reduced volume, that means each air molecule has less space to move around, therefore the pressure will be increased. Again, in you at the moment, probably only by a couple of millimetres of mercury. But nevertheless, it will be increased. That will mean that the pressure inside the lungs now, the pressure of the air inside the lungs now, is going to be greater than the external atmospheric pressure. And as a result of that, the air will be blown out of the lungs. So inspiration is facilitated 
by reducing the pressure, sucking air in. Expiration is facilitated by increasing the pressure, blowing air out. So remember, air is sucked in, but blown out.